lesson is a brief overview of some of the master data that's required for a TM implementation. So master data includes, and this is not an all-inclusive list, a location, the physical address of the locations you're shipping to or shipping from. They're closely related to what SAP calls business partners. They may be customers, suppliers, or even drivers. There typically is a pretty hard link between a, say, a ship to customer and a location. So that's, that's pretty important. Products, what you're actually shipping, that's required master data in TM. Your plants and shipping points, what SAP calls, are the actual typically ship from locations if you're doing outbound shipping, or they may be the receiving locations if you're doing inbound shipping. Freight rates, uh, very important master data in TM. Vehicles can be your own truck, shipping containers, the actual items that you use to ship things. We're going to talk about lanes, how TM can allow you to get your products from here to there, and then some geographic attributes, zones, and zone hierarchy. So a quick mention of this tool called SIF. SIF is the tool to keep your master data in sync. So it is important to run this syncing tool to keep your customers and vendors, carriers, and materials in sync. Now the concept is that your, your R3 or S4 system is the master. You keep your data in there, make updates to that system as you need to. When SIF runs, it actually replicates the location data or the business partner data to TM. So you run SIF in typically in background jobs to keep things in sync. How often you run those jobs to keep things in sync depends on your business. The good news is that SIF, um, it was kind of a crazy concept to start with, but it's been around for many years. It, it needs to go away. It will go away. It does go away in the embedded solution. Um, and that's a very, very good thing. But if you choose to run the standalone option, you still have to have it. And I and I am maybe putting SIF down. Maybe I shouldn't be. The technology is old, but it does work. It doesn't usually cause heartburn for companies that are running the standalone option. It's just... I'm never a fan of data replication when you don't have to replicate data. Location. So this is where the specific physical address comes in place. TM is not happy if you give it a post office box. So a physical address of typically a customer or a vendor if you're doing inbound. It does allow for what SAP calls one-time ship twos. If you're just shipping to individual consumers, you capture their address one time. You don't need to maintain a formal master record for that. You also associate a plant with a physical location. Again, that key shipping address is important. Um, by the way, that physical location of plants or warehouses, say, across the street from each other, that becomes a very key aspect of your design. How do you deal with that? Do you consider that to be multiple locations or one location? Uh, big question. No easy answer, but it has to be part of your discussion. A location typically will include geocoding. If you have a GIS system, that system, one of the things it will do is populate this data automatically in your location. And then that geocoding then just works like Google Maps. It tells you distance based on some parameters that uh, you set up. And a location often is mapped to what we'll call hours of operation. So for this customer, Bliss Home, we can set up goods receiving hours so that we can only schedule deliveries for Bliss Home from, say, 2 to 4 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays, and TM will recognize that and build its loads around that constraint. Very closely related to locations is business partners. Basically, you can think of location and business partner as kind of having a one-to-one -one correspondence, but business partner focuses the role. What role do they play? Are they considered a ship to? Ship to obviously is the the key 
role for GM, but GM does need to capture other roles like other interested parties that need to know about a particular uh, international sale, for example. And there usually is a, an explicit link, a business partner to a location, so that links the role to the geography. Means of transport is a crucial concept in TM. I advise you to spend lots of time debating about the best definition of these. Think of it maybe as, as a mode, truck or, or ocean or container. And you can also build means of transport in a hierarchy. Uh, for example, I've done implementations where we have a means of transport called full truckload. But that full truckload consists of lower level means of hierarchy, dry van, uh, refrigerated transport, flatbed. Um, this has major implications for how you set up your transportation network, most specifically the definition of your lanes. So again, this, this needs to be a thought out very, very carefully to set up an efficient transportation network based on means of transports. So zone is geography again, it's basically a grouping of locations. So a simple view is that a zone can be any combination of a country or state or a range of postal codes or simply individual locations. And you, can, you can see the three tabs here on the left hand side where you can define a zone as any combination of location or postal code range or states or countries for that matter. Likewise, you can take those individual zones and put them into a hierarchy. So in this example, my US zone consists of these geographic zones. And TM recognizes that if you refer to US zone, it knows that US also consists of all these sub zones, if you will. Another illustration of a zone, because it's a, a pretty important concept. So look at the zone in yellow, and I, I hope this appears as yellow on your screens. So that zone has, what, seven different locations in it. But it is also possible for a given location to be in multiple zones. This particular location is in three, four, five zones, depending on how you define this. It is OK for zones to overlap. On the other hand, you do want to keep system performance uh, in mind because it is possible to get too precise with your zones and location definitions to where you might actually hinder the system. So again, all this is part of a, an intelligent design. Start simple and build complexity later as you need it. Now we get to the lane. So the lane is actually a zone to zone connection, or it can be a location to zone, any combination of the two for a given means of transport. So here is an example where I have a zone called mountain, and maybe this is a zone that allows me to go from Denver, Colorado to LA, a US West. This is the details of what that zone what that lane consists of. And here's your link to the means of transport. In this case, it's a full truckload lane going from any location in my, what I ever define as my mountain zone to my west zone. Maybe this would be how you arrange your full truckloads from Denver to LA, for example. And a lane can be linked to specific carriers. So it might be for that this lane you allow, in this case, two carriers to be used, one or two, carrier A, carrier B. This is optional, but a lot of companies find this useful to assign carriers, maybe one, two, three, maybe up to five carriers per lane to help their carrier tendering process. Finally, there's resource, truck. So a truck, say in the example of a truck, you, you need to define that resource in terms of what it is and its capacity. So you are 
defining capacity in terms of however you need to. It might be weight, might be Q, might be number of pallets or some combination. There are lots of places to record the dimensions, wheel locations, door widths, heights of that truck or container or um, vessel, whatever it is, if you need to. The key is that you are taking that truck and you are linking it to a means of transport. So again, we're hooking everything together here. So I have hooked this particular truck to my, what we call for this particular customer, a dedicated truck load, full truck load means of transport. A resource can also be generic, meaning it's a common carrier. You don't have a specific truck number for it because you just call the common carrier and they bring a truck. Or it can be part of your own fleet where you can actually assign your trucks by license number, trailer numbers, what have you. A resource can also be considered as passive, meaning it does not move on its own, versus active. And a truck obviously could consist of a tractor and a trailer. Uh, I usually try and define them as one active resource if possible, but it is certainly is possible to define them obviously as a tractor and a trailer as an active and a passive that allows among other things trailer swap scenarios to take place finally there is driver driver can be associated with a truck um, I think of driver really is a is, is a form of business partner but it's kind of a hybrid of a business partner and a resource so the business partner stuff is that you can record names and addresses and Availability, uh, such as shifts, this driver might work five days a week. Uh, you can record their break time, vacation time, availability. Um, there is a simulation of some of the US DOT requirements for truck drivers. I will caution you, and SAP will caution you, that this is, it is only a simulation. It was not designed to actually conform to the latest and greatest DOT requirements. It will come close, but you cannot rely 100% on it. You also have a place to record qualifications for that driver, hazmat certifications, driver's licenses. Um, you can define your own qualification types as well. And of course, there are cases where you need team drivers and you can allow for that as well. Other important fields? So your products, uh, discussion with some of your production procurement guys, where each product needs to have a defined weight in a cube and some way of determining a piece count. Uh, a debate we've gone through at my current client, for example, is they, they deal in rolls of fabric. A roll of fabric can be fairly small or it can be fairly big, but there is this yet unresolved problem of how do you take a, a roll of fabric and determine how much it weighs, how many pieces it consists of, because it varies. So, but TM really requires all aspects of this to be able to function. And below is a list of fields that are all part of S4, but these are key for the integration with TM. So you have to have a careful discussion with procurement or your order to cash teams to understand how they're going to be used and when they're going to be used. Shipping edition, for example, is a key driver. There are times when shipping edition might be used to predetermine that a given order is going truckload, period, no ifs, ands, or buts. Or shipping edition might be generic, let TM decide based on optimization runs. Um, Similar discussions have to take place for some of these other fields. Incoterms is pretty self-explanatory. Calendars, uh, very, very important because it indicates when TM is allowed to schedule, when trucks are available, when the when the warehouse is running, you know, is it, is it a 24 by seven operation or does it take holidays and do we have a consistent definition of holidays? Units of measure, uh, that's always a killer um, because categorizing complicated materials into consistent units of measures is tough. Dangerous goods have to take that into account for transportation. And what always drives TM planners crazy, of course, are real life things like credit blocks. 
um, or delivery blocks, or we've taken an order from a customer, but, but they're not sure exactly where they want it to go yet, so obviously you really can't ship it. Things like that. So all these are very important considerations in your design.